uh, at the end of this will be that if you have a radio with you, which it looks like most of you do, you did not find yours. You did not. Oh, you did find it. Okay, good. I was going to loan you one if you uh, did not, so you could go through it because we're going to do a lot of hands-on stuff. So the goal at the end of it will be able to use your radio. Should be pretty simple. So um, this assumes you've kind of been through the first class already. You know why you're here. You know that you needed some communication. So I do have those handouts available, but um, I don't have them with me today. So if you need those and you want to pass those out, let me know and I'll make sure you get those. So to start with, when you, when you got your radio, you probably got a little radio, a little tiny antenna, a little battery. I don't know if you've assembled everything yet. And it came with the manual. The manual for these radios, uh, this is all geared toward the Baofeng line of radios. This manual is not real great. So that's why we do these kind of things. So some assembly on your radio. Uh, if you have not done it yet, the battery just slides in the bottom of these, clips in. You want to make sure to give it a good little lock in place and it's clipped in. If you need to remove them, if you look at the back where the battery clip is, right above it is a little, uh, little catch. You can hit that catch and the battery will slide out on those. So for this demo, I'm going to use one of the things that I, I recommended everybody get was an extended uh, battery. The one that comes with it is good, won't last very long, so I recommended that everybody buy this extended version also, and then this goes in your radio gear as a spare in case you ever need it. Uh, it comes with a little antenna also. That I also recommended everybody keep those as a spare, but buy an, uh, an aftermarket antenna which gives the radio a little bit more range. So that just screws on the top, and you want to be fairly gentle when you screw these down. You don't need to be putting pliers on it and really cranking it down. Screw it down until it starts to get snug. Give it just another little bit of turn, and that's it. That's installed. Um, some of these radios, if you buy more of them past what you have right now, you might have a problem where the battery won't stay clipped in it. It goes in, but it pops back out right away. And I found if you loosen the two little screws on this belt clip, that the battery will slide in, snug them back down a little bit, and then you shouldn't have a problem having that battery stay clipped in after that. And then the final thing about it is when you're using them, I always teach everybody, make sure you're using this part of the radio. Don't grab it by here or here and, and move it around. Um, these connectors where the antennas hook up are fairly fragile, so you don't want to break anything. So the first thing we'll cover is I'm going to give you guys these little guides. I call them an in case of emergency guide. You guys, I don't. You, I think you have one, but I don't know if you brought them. I'll give you each one because it'll be easier to go through them. Um, this guide is for one. Number one, we're going to cover most everything that's in it. But uh, the second thing to know about it is that it's great to have some sort of a little quick guide with your radio. As I mentioned, the manual's not too good. So having this, which is some quick operating instructions and some things to remember, makes sense. I use kind of an expanded version of this with a little bit more information in it that's unique to me and my situation, and you all may need to customize it um, for you as well. So the first thing I wanted to do is direct you toward page four in it. Page four is just a basic uh, radio operations type of page, and the important thing I wanted you to see there was some buttons on the radio. So the first graphic at the top shows you there's an on-off button that's uh, on, the, on the radio. So that, that's an on-off and it's a volume switch. And the next button to know is a push to talk button. That's the last graphic on page four at the very bottom. That's on the left hand side of the radio and it's the uh, large button that you have there. And I think it, if you can read it, it says PTT on it push to talk or the mic button. Then you've got several buttons on the keypad. So the keypad's not just the numbered keys, but there's also an orange and a blue uh, button on your radios. That's part of the keypad, considered part of the keypad also. The blue button that says AB, there is, a, you discovered the alarm button. <laughs> the blue button that says AB that's on there actually will move your radio between two separate receivers. You can actually monitor two channels at once or, or use um, two different receivers and keep two channels or two frequencies in the two different receivers at the same time. 
when, and we'll get into some of this in a little bit. We're going to turn it on and actually use them so you can see what it's doing. But I just wanted to cover what the buttons were first. There's an orange button that says VFO MEM. The radio has two modes of operation. It's got a memory mode and then a mode VFO just stands for variable frequency oscillator. It means you can key in any frequency you want on the keypad. Uh, on the keypad in the bottom right hand corner is a little key with a pound symbol on it. When the radio's on and you're not trying to uh, type in a channel or use a special function, that button will toggle through the power settings that the radio has. Most of the radios will transmit between 1 watt, 4 watts, and 8 watts. And that'll let you cycle through those power modes and we'll see that in a little bit also. Um, another couple of buttons to know, the first, uh, the top row, the middle two buttons is an up and down arrow. That will uh, let you change your channels up or down one channel at a time. And then the last thing to know about them is over on the right side, there's a little port here at the side and you can kind of pry it open. There's a couple of jacks in there and this is for uh, external speaker, for programming, uh, that sort of thing. And I believe an external microphone will hook up in those also. So that's kind of just some basic buttons and that, that uh, page number four with radio operation should help you remember what those are. So staying on that same page, um, those, those steps are turn your radio on just until it clicks, but don't turn the volume all the way up. So I usually turn it on, let it come alive, let the displays come alive, and then I turn it up. The reason, reason for that is if I just take it and crank it wide open, you hear a beep. Depending upon how or where you're using this, you don't want someone else hearing that beep. If you're hunting, you certainly don't want the animals hearing it. If you're using this in an environment where there might be some bad guys out there, you don't want them hearing it either. So perfect habit to get into is just turn it on to the click, let the screen come alive, and then turn your volume up to whatever volume level uh, that you want to use. So to give you an idea of just how to, how to use it from the front panel by typing a frequency in, we're going to set these radios to police dispatch here in town just to listen to them. So you've got that AB button that I mentioned again, and if you look at your radio display, you've got a couple of lines of information in the middle of it. Out to the left of that, uh, you should see uh, a little triangle next to one of those rows. Uh, that's also in the second graphic down on page four. It's circled in red. So what you want to do is use that AV button. You can actually toggle it back and forth right now to see what it does. And you'll see that little triangle will move up and down. We want to use that AV button until the triangle is next to the top line on there. Then we'll make sure that the radio is in a mode that's not a channel mode, but it lets us type in a frequency. So if you look out to the extreme right of your display, you might have a couple of three-digit, either one-digit, two-digit, or three-digit numbers. That shows it's in channel mode. If you hit that orange VFO MEM button, you should see those little one, two, and three-digit numbers go away, and your display should change to just all numbers. So that's the, that's the first part to know that you're in a mode where you can just type in a frequency. Is everybody there? Okay. So what you'll want to do is type in on your keypad one five five seven zero zero. Display should say one five five seven zero zero. And we'll hang on and wait here for a moment and see if the police will say something. Saturday mornings usually aren't their busiest time, <laughs> but um, we'll we'll give that a moment and then if we don't hear a transmission, we'll move on to the next part. That was just intended to be a demonstration of show you, showing you how you can type a frequency in. Um, even though I'm going to program your radios at the end, if they're not already programmed, and I think everybody's programmed. There we go. We're here in traffic. If you're not hearing anything, um, turn your volume up a little bit. And you'll notice on your radio where you're hearing something right now, the green light should be lighting up on it, and the display should change color also. Did everybody receive something on their radios? Yep. Okay. 
So that, um, that would give you an idea of, of how to program those in. So then we're going to move on. We're going to program in another frequency on these things. So I would turn your volume back down. And we're going to set it to a family radio service frequency. So we'll type in uh, 462 612. When you did that, you should notice you've got that number in there, but there's a tiny little five. If you can read it, I almost can't read it all the way out to the right. That is correct on this particular channel. So we'll set our, our turn our volume up just a little bit. And I'm going to mute my speaker for a moment because I'm going to talk on this and I don't know if I'm going to get some kind of unusual feedback thing going on. Thank you. <laughs> so just to cover that again, that was the push to talk button that I used on the side. And um, wait about a second or two, let the radio come alive and then start to speak to say whatever you're going to say. So the microphone on these things, if you look at that blue AB button, just above it a little bit, there's like a little hole in the case. That's the microphone. So just so you're aware of where it's at, you'll see a lot of people kind of We'll hold the radio in all sorts of orientations. The best thing to do is to talk directly into that microphone. Give yourself about 8 or 10 inches between you and the radio. That doesn't overload the radio at all. Uh, so it gives you good speech. If you get too close, no one's going to hear you. If you're too far away, no one's going to hear you either. The other thing is... If, oh, do you have a question? So this channel, 462, 612, says a family. That's like your family thing. Um, are you familiar with the family radio service radios? They're called hunting radios a lot here in town. You buy them like in the sporting goods store. They'll come two to a pack. A lot of times they come. Well, it's, a, it's actually a nationwide um, service called family radio service. Those radios come pre-programmed with a certain number of channels on them. You can buy them in Walmart, any sporting goods store. I've also added those frequencies into the programming on these radios. Uh, so although we dialed it up directly, I've got it programmed in your radios right now, too. Um, it's a, and there's a reason for that. Not only does it let you uh, operate with this radio on um, family radio service frequencies, but I'm going to talk about a national program called the Channel 3 program that you can use to get help. So I, I usually use FRS3, which is what that channel is, as, as the demo on that. But no, not unique to my family. That, you, would, you would find that on any of those type of radios nationwide. Mm -hmm. that, that one I don't they're just using the frequency mode right now I don't have them in channel mode I am going to give you a channel guide at the end that shows everything that's in the radio too so I mentioned the distance from you to the microphone that's important uh, the other thing that's important with these things is you'll see people little talk into them and they're kind of doing this sort of thing and the, the antennas are vertical for a reason on these. The, the radio wave actually leaves that antenna in a, in a vertical type polarization. So when you're using any kind of radio services out there, when you're talking to other people, the standard is keep that antenna vertical. Uh, as you can imagine, um, Becky's got her radio right there. And if I was talking like this, my signal comes out oriented different than her radio is looking for. That'll work over a short distance, but if we start getting a couple of miles between us, it's not going to work anymore. And then simply just tipping that antenna back up works great. One little important thing to know about that is maybe you're working, um, you're out in the woods, you want some very close communications, you turn your power way down on your radio, that's a good operating tip. The other thing might be we might agree ahead of time and say we are going to orient our antennas like this means that everybody else out there using their antennas vertical has less chance of hearing our communications. Kind of helps keep things a little bit um, quieter that way. So let me have all of you guys, one at a time, uh, try to transmit on that channel too. So remember, use that push to talk button, 
hold it, wait a second or two, and then just say whatever you want to say, testing. We'll make sure we can all hear each other. Go ahead, John. Okay, testing, one, two, three, testing. Yep, I got you. Testing. Yep, got you. Next one. Testing. Get a little bit closer to it. Testing, one, two, three. And I don't have you for some reason. Let's check yours also. Let's see if you've got it. Okay. I actually saw you. I didn't hear you. So we'll, we'll check when we're done and we'll, we'll work one-on-one -on, -one on it and we'll just make sure that, that, that what you're doing is right. One, two, three. Yep. That's a, that one's a little bit better. So it's the distance between you and the radio that will help also. Volume won't matter. Volume's just for the received side. The power output uh, is fixed on these radios. So there's, there's uh, with the exception of you have the button that'll let you um, set the power to those incremental uh, incremental amounts of power. You don't have a variable amount of power on them. So that was uh, um, we did transmit then. So you guys learned a little bit about it, um, and that's just for that that um, frequency entry mode. So while you're on the air, aside from the things I already mentioned about the mic distance and watching your your uh, orientation of your antenna. There's some do's and don'ts you might want to think about when you're on the radio too. So if you look at page five of that little in case of emergency guide, a couple of do's and don'ts. Under do's I've listed do call for a location name or Amron, and I'm gonna couple that with the second one. Do use code names. Um, I suggest that you use code names when you're talking on the radio. It uh, limits what people are gonna understand if they're just listening in on what you're doing. There's no actual name. There's no location given, so it makes it a little bit harder to know who is that that someone's listening to. You might want some privacy in your communications. There's no real privacy on the radios, but that gives you a little bit um, kind of advantage for you. Um, that first line mentions call for Amron. There's a, if you're needing help, there's a national group called Amron. It's the American uh, Radio Relay Operators Network. They uh, monitor ham radio frequencies. They also monitor channel three on CB, channel three on the family radio service radios, channel three on multi-use radio, MERS radio. So calling for Amron when you're on channel three, and I'll, we'll show you channel three at the end also, can get you help when you're just out anywhere. It's kind of like old channel nine used to be on the CB uh, back in 70s and 80s, similar to that. Another do that's real important is speak clearly when you're on the radio. Sometimes um, it can be hard to hear people, um, depending upon their voice quality and how that works with the radio, the volume level they're using. So the, the more clearly you speak on the radio, the easier it'll be to make communications. Did you find that the other day when we were testing? So yeah, it's, it got to the point where I think each of us had to say, what, what was that again? So yeah, speaking clearly helps with that. The other thing with your radio that um, is, a, is an important do is keeping your transmission short. A uh, couple reasons for that. First is that as long as you've got the, that push to talk button down, you're using the most power out of the battery that the radio uh, will ever use. So your battery life shortens with longer transmissions. The other thing is, is if somebody is attempting to locate you, the longer you're transmitting, the more time they have to kind of direction find and see where you're transmitting from. So keeping those transmissions short uh, will help you out. Couple of big don'ts. I, we sort of mentioned them already, but don't use real names. Don't reveal actual location names. This is Jim. I'm heading to our home over in 10 Mile. You may not want to do that. It gives away too much information. So our, our family does use uh, a family code name for all of us so that when we hear it on the radio, we know who we are. And my son actually likes to be called Tree Rat, so I wish he was in here to hear that right now, but he's not because he loves the name. He got that because whenever you're looking around for him outside, you don't look around down, you look up. He's in a tree somewhere. So the next page is, we'll jump over, and you can turn your radios off too. We don't need them on right now. The next page to jump over to is uh, page six on here. This is, this is where you'll want to create your own channel list, put your, put your most commonly used 
uh, channels on here. These might be a, a common channel you intend on in using as a family or a group of family and friends. These could be public safety frequencies like um, uh, the sheriff uh, dispatch, which just to give you a, a tidbit of information, the dispatch for police that's done here is covers county and all the cities around us too. So when you hear that one dispatch channel, that's everything that law enforcement's doing countywide. Doesn't cover Oregon State Police, but that's still pretty darn good to have that. The other thing I recommend that people put on here is ham radio repeaters. You've probably seen a lot of towers up on the mountain sites. Uh, ham radio operators will put a device up there called a repeater that lets them use a little handheld radio to talk up to that repeater on the mountainside, which repeats their signal at great power all across the county. Hams will jump on the air right away if there's any kind of an emergency or something going on. So if you have that listed as a channel on here, that will uh, help you out to be able to get back to that channel real quick. So I've mentioned channels a lot. And we do have some things programmed in your radio. So here is a list of channels that are pre-programmed in there. Their, the radios will hold 125 memories in them. So that's double-sided also, by the way. So I don't program all of them up. Um, there, you'll notice there's some gaps, so you can do some of your own programming. Um, a couple of important ones to note, though, are channel two uh, on here is one of those channel threes. Uh, that's an FRS radio channel three. That's a great one that you might want to keep uh, on your list. Uh, channel number 14 is the dispatch frequency for all the law enforcement countywide. That's one that we just uh, dialed up a little bit ago. There are some fire department frequencies on here. Number 10 is a fire department dispatch. That's a great one to know. If you do not have a weather radio already, channel 41 is a good one. That's NOAA weather radio that comes out of Medford. That broadcasts continually 24 hours a day. Channels 51 through 75 are all of those uh, radios for family radio service or multi-use radio service that I mentioned. That's those blister pack or hunting radios that you can buy in the, in the various stores. The remainder of those channels that you see on there are all ham radio frequencies. You, you could monitor those, but I would not transmit on those uh, unless you get a ham radio license. And I do teach ham radio licensing classes. Also, if anyone's interested, uh, I'm going to be doing another series of three of them here at the end of the year. The prime ham radio frequency to note here locally is channel 125. That's the uh, Umpqua Valley Amateur Radio Club's channel. They have a repeater up on the mountain site. That frequency is generally pretty active. So I don't want to run down the whole list. There's a ton of them on here, but if you have questions on it, get with me afterwards and I'll explain more of them. The, the real key would be turn your radio on onto some of these channels and see what kind of activity is going on. Another one I think I'll hit before I put this paper down, though, number 25. That's the tsunami warning channel. So if you're heading out to the coast, You've got your radio with you because you should always have it with you. 25 is a good one to tune to in the event that there's any kind of tsunami warning that occurs. Next thing I wanted to talk about was having a plan. So this little guide could become the, the basis for your plan and should. It would be something you want to expand on. I do have this in electronic format. It's in Microsoft Word. And if you want a copy of this, I'll grab some email addresses afterwards and I can send it over to you and you're welcome to revise this however you'd like to, to use it. So on page three of it, one of the things that my family knows is if something happens, they grab their, their book out of their radio bag and you probably saw me fumbling with this at the start. My kids both have a radio bag that's similar to this. Uh, my wife and I both carry radio bags. It's got our radio gear our spares, and a copy of this guide that's in it all the time. So the family knows something's happened, my adrenaline's running, what the heck do I do? They can pull it out and go to page three right away. And it's the first things for them to do. Uh, it's an initial set of emergency procedures, and I always like to start off with that number one, make sure you're somewhere safe. That's the first thing. You don't want to be out in the middle of I-5, in the middle of an enormous wreck, 
trying to navigate what's happening and jump on your radio right away. Wait till you're somewhere safe. It, it seems to be a no-brainer, but when, you're, when your adrenaline's running, having a checklist to follow is so valuable that uh, it'll save you quite a bit. Um, we t I'm talking here about referring to radio operations, which is the very next page that you guys already saw with those basic operations of the radio. Uh, figuring out what location that you're closest to. Um, this is, we, we have several locations where we will meet. The family knows that if something happens, that's a location that they need to go to. If they're in Roseburg, there's locations. If they're in Winston, there's locations. So they, that is one of the things I took off of here, but you might want to include something like that. Of what locations would you like to meet in if you're in town, you have family coming into the area, that sort of thing. And then it gives them some information on uh, what they might want to do in order to get a hold of, of uh, one of us. There's also a home location responsibilities down there. We have some, not just local family, but some extended family that's out of the area. And then some local friends who we've decided if something's happening, maybe Highway 42's blocked. We live way out on Highway 42. If Highway 42's blocked and they can't uh, get back in town, they know they're welcome to come to our place. And it just kind of lists for us at our home some of the things that we will do to help people out who might happen to be in that situation. That's kind of their, their little quick hit guide of what they should do. Back on page seven, there's a little bit, um, a little bit more expanded guide that once they've settled down, they've got their radio on, they know where they're at, uh, they can turn back to page seven on there and they can start looking at those steps that are on page seven. They're basically an expansion of what's on page three, but it just gives them a little bit more information. First one, Stay calm. Know that God's got a hold of you. You'll be okay. Number two, evaluate your situation. Stay out of immediate danger. Number three, turn on your radio and follow the, follow the procedures in here and set your radio to channel. And I've left a little note in there. Insert your main channel number here. This is one of those ones where you might want to look at this frequency list and choose a channel that you intend on working on as a family or a larger group of people. So my, my suggestion would be use one of those family radio service channels that's on there. Choose one of those uh, and use that as a, as a common operating channel. I suggest that because these radios will work on there. If somebody happens to only have hunting radios, those will work on the same channel. So you can have some standards without everybody having to own this exact model of radio. We also talk on here in number five about monitoring uh, for available information. That would be where they'd refer back to your channel list and say, maybe we're going to monitor uh, law enforcement dispatch periodically. Maybe we'll monitor the ham radio repeater periodically. Um, so we'll monitor, and every 15 minutes, if I haven't gotten a hold of anybody yet, I will probably make a call out on the radio trying to get a hold of my family. So we, we know, and that's every 15 minutes on those exact 15 minute increments, we know that at the top of the hour, 15, 30, and 45 minutes, we're gonna, we will be listening for each other. Um, that, that's kind of expected with everybody. And then number six, look at the attached map and determine where you're gonna go. That's those locations I was talking about. So for my guide, I have a couple more pages with some little spot maps of specific areas where the family knows they can go to and meet. So that covers about every page that's in this little guide. There are a few more guidelines on the back. I won't cover every one of those. I'll let you uh, read those at your leisure, but the important ones are on the first side of that. The whole point of this, though, is have one of these. Have some sort of a plan. Test it frequently. The, the only way to stay current on your radio, knowing how to use it, is to test that plan out frequently. Um, test it. Revise it. Uh, tune it, test it again, revise it and tune it. It keeps you familiar with your radio. It keeps you familiar with your plan. It also fulfills one of the other things that I like to do is making sure you're doing regular maintenance with the radio. With all of that, you'll notice, well, my battery indicator is getting low. I need to make sure I'm keeping the battery charged. And not just that one, but if you do carry a radio bag with a spare, make sure you pop that in your radio and make sure that spare 
is fully charged all the time too. Checking the radio for any kind of damage. These belt clips tend to break. So um, they're cheap to buy extras. I have a few extras that I bought for our purposes. Check it for things like that. The antenna, is the antenna having any kind of a problem? Maybe it's sort of becoming bent because of how I've stored everything. Just a general check over the radio. Uh, do you keep yours on all the time? I don't or keep it on. If there's some sort of an emergency, that's the first thing I do is I turn it on then. I don't keep it on all the time. At home, I, I often do have a radio that's listening to the ham radio repeater uh, and police dispatch, but I'm a ham radio operator too, so I like to just hear what's happening on that. But in general, it's not on all the time. You could do that if you wanted to do that with these. In just the receive mode, they'll sip the battery and they'll last a long, long time. So if you wanted to leave it on all the time, you sure could do that. But um, just really during an emergency, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an emergency. Sometimes I'll hear, I work close to I-5, and I'll hear sirens, and I'll hear a lot of sirens, and I turn it on, and I go to police dispatch right away. I want to see what's going on and see if I need to get a hold of family also. So I mentioned that helps you staying familiar with the operation of the radio, your procedure guide. Um, one of those things, I wanted to give you a handout on that Channel 3 project, too, to give you an idea of how that works. If you are going to use uh, your radio on Channel 3, there's two of them there. This gives you kind of a quick guide on what the Channel 3 project is nationwide and how you might want to use it. So they, they mention right at the very top of this, this covers things like CB radio, FRS, which are those little hunting radios on its channel 3, and you'll notice that frequency all the way out at the right is what we programmed in a minute ago. MERS is another type of radio like Family Radio Service, but it has its own channel 3. Um, one of the things on there that, that um, channel 3 mentions is do not use privacy codes. These radios don't do that, but the, the hunting radios have a mode called privacy mode. Don't use those on those. If you've, ha if you've got the hunting radios, you should know what that is. The manual that comes with them talks about that. On Channel 3 Project, they talk about making contact in 321. Turn your radio on, set it to Channel 3. Attempt to broadcast every two minutes, once an hour at the top of the hour. And if you don't hear anything in those two minutes, shut it off. Try again an hour later. The idea behind that is to conserve that battery and make it last as long as it can possibly last. This project works hand-in-hand uh, -hand with AMRON that I mentioned earlier, the American Radio Relay Operators Network. They use AMRON call signs. So they've, they've given a script down below on how you might call out to somebody or things that you might hear on uh, Channel 3. Uh, they've, for instance, they say you might hear or you might call this is Amron Tango 6-7. If you hear that Amron keyword, that is somebody you can get help from, so that would be good to know. In the Douglas County area, there are a pretty good number of Amron operators. Uh, it's a complete volunteer thing that's done, uh, but they will be monitoring Channel 3 and talking to people on Channel 3. So there's a, there's a big guide on Channel 3 there. You can uh, find them on the web if you look for the Channel 3 project. Um, the other thing, though, to remember, I mentioned, if you're hearing this on Channel 3, that's somebody uh, who you can get help from. But on the back of the sheet, in big, bold letters, I mention, be careful. Even, even though, theoretically, these folks should be okay and vetted, just be careful when you're dealing with people you don't know, trying to get help from them. Um, so it doesn't, this, this doesn't necessarily mean that anyone you talk to on Channel 3 is going to be good to go some common sense with that and just be careful. Um, and I mentioned already maintaining your radio, making sure your batteries are always charged. You don't necessarily want to leave this sitting on the charger base all the time. You should have gotten a charger base with your radio that this will drop in. That'll actually shorten the life of the batteries, leaving it on the charger all the time. I recommend making sure it's fully charged. Wait until you lose a bar or two of, of your battery strength then drop it back on the charger till it's fully charged and once it's done, pop it off the charger and continue to use it. That's also a good time to put your spare battery back in it and uh, give it a check and see if it's fully charged up too. So, just an example, I keep a radio on since normally the battery. 
when we were going through the text, I turned my radio on, the battery was totally dead, and the volume got turned on somewhere during the battery. But I keep a, like you said, I keep the small one as the backup, keep it in my bag, so mm -hmm. it's still on in plenty of power. They'll sit fully charged for months. Long time. A long time. I mean, I think I've had one, this one for like six or eight months charged in my bag, and it's still got a full charge. So, doing the maintenance, checking that stuff, keeping the spare battery, that's worth it. Otherwise, I have a nice radio that I couldn't reach anybody with. It's a fancy brick at that point. Throw it at somebody. So here's a sheet of just generic notes. There's a couple of them there also on some radio usage. It isn't necessarily in the radio guide because it kind of gets a little bit almost beating a dead horse to put that much in there. Um, a couple of key points on this though is obviously your radio can't talk and listen at the same time. It's not like a cell phone, uh, so it doesn't work that way. Two and three go hand in hand with the, the earlier statement I made about keeping your transmission short. Um, pause between your transmissions. Think about what you want to say before you hit that button and talk. That'll help keep those transmissions as brief as possible. Number four is kind of the clarity rule. Keep your language simple and avoid foul language. You never know who's listening. Um, a lot of families will hand their kids the, um, those hunting radios, so they might be listening to these things. Not that I would expect any of us here would have a problem with the, the foul language, but just, just so you know, think about that. Um, the number five in there, nobody owns a channel. Even if you pick a channel or a frequency uh, as your operating standard, uh, you might find other people on it one day, and that's okay. The, the airwaves are to be shared. So the idea there is with your, with your guide, when you start building your channel list that you want to keep in here, Think about a primary channel you might work on and a couple of backups to have in there too so that if that happens, you just direct folks you want to talk to. Let's move to channel whatever it may be. If you are hearing things on the radio, number six mentions that people that are actually working, about, uh, working in an emergency situation or using these for emergency communications, they do get priority though. It's not that they own a channel, but there's generally loss of life or limb or loss of property going on there, and we do not want to uh, cause a problem with that. We may want those people to come help us. Number seven, no privacy on the radio. I mentioned that already. If you're transmitting on here, anything you say is completely public. One good thing to do if you're having problems understanding what somebody's saying, they are probably having problems understanding what you're saying. Number eight talks about repeating back what you heard. John might mention to me, um, there's several police cars over here on the road by the house. And I might repeat back, I, I hear you, several police cars on the road over by your house. So he knows that I got what he had to say. Part of that communication thing, people think about communication as somebody saying something. Probably the most important part of communication is listening. That's, that's more, it's more valuable than the speaking part is. So number nine talks about don't interrupt other people when they're on that channel. Wait until they're finished unless you actually have a real live emergency and you'd want to break in and, and mention something right away in that case. So just a few quick notes there. Um, also, when you're talking on the radio, there's kind of a common standard of terms that you'll hear radio operators use. I, so I give you this list on that so you can understand what you're hearing and there's a couple of them that are great to use anyway. And if you have any experience around radios, you've probably heard some of these a time or two already. Things like go ahead or stand by, affirmative and negative instead of yes or no. Uh, so here's a list of some common things you might hear on the radio. Some of them not so common. Uh, Wilco at the bottom of the list uh, is one that you just, you still hear, and it sounds like it's an outdated term, but it's not. I will comply. I'll do what you're talking about. So that, that I didn't want to cover all of those, but just something that you might hear on there. Um, so using these things, I mentioned that they're all already programmed. I programmed them up for everybody. 
So there is a way, if you are brave and you want to give it a try, there is a way to program them through the front panel. You can go through the manual for the radios and try to learn how to do this. Um, I found that that is intensely frustrating because the manual was written by people in China with a very limited command of English. So it's pretty hard to follow. Um, this gives you a, a, a very concise way of learning how to program it. Uh, the, there's instructions over on the left. Uh, and then on the right, you'll get buttons or uh, menu items, uh, buttons that you're going to need to hit on the radio in order to do this, in order to do this front panel programming. So this thing mentions using 127 as a channel to program into. I've left channel 127 open on the programming. It's kind of a scratch pad, so if you want to uh, program up one of your own frequencies in here, I would suggest using that. The top of that list also talks about a receive frequency, a transmit frequency, and a tone number. If you are just talking to somebody on uh, a non-ham radio frequency, receive and transmit frequency are all that's important. If you are attempting to use ham radio stuff, once you get a ham radio license, that tone, uh, that tone number will matter. So, here's another handout for you guys. This is a list of all the radio repeaters that I know of for hundreds of miles around us. It's a really long list. You'll notice that there's a frequency in here. That's the transmit frequency. The receive frequency on here would be, for instance, that number one item, 146.62 is the transmit. That offset says in a, in a transmit, you want to subtract 0.6. So the transmit frequency for that one would be 146.02. And then there's that tone value you'll need if you do the front panel programming. The, um, so these, this list is sorted by city order in, in Oregon, yes. Okay. So you're saying this 146.62 is the receiver? Receive, yep. And then and then the transmit will be the same frequency minus 0.6. So I, I'll probably clarify that on future versions of this repeater list. I see how that could not be, how that's not particularly clear. And these aren't just ham. These are all ham. These are 100% ham frequencies. So the, the value on it is if you're going to run down to Ashland, there's four ham radio repeaters you might be able to listen to. Uh, that if there was something that happened while you were in Ashland, then you have that ability to dial in one of those repeaters to hear what the hams are having to say, because they do jump in with emergency communications right away. In a couple of cases on this list, you're going to see the line highlighted in green with a channel number all the way out to the right. That means I've already got it programmed in here, and that's the channel that it is on. So as you can see, with that amount of information I gave you on programming, manually programming them is an absolute pain in the butt. Uh, it's, uh, it can be done. I, I have done it when I go out of, out of town and I don't have a frequency already programmed in. But I use the radio all the time and it's very familiar for me too and that might not be your, your thing. So there is software you can buy to program these up. I've got it back here on my laptop and I'll show it to you once we're all done. Uh, and I, I can program a radio, show you how to program one with it too. The software's free. The cable to go between the computer and the radio is about 20 bucks. And it makes life a whole lot easier. You can take a channel list like I have on that sheet, which is in an electronic format. And basically, you just plug it straight into the radio. No button pushing. It's very simple. So I recommend that everybody um, do that with their, with their radios instead of the front panel programming. Why don't yeah. you clarify a little bit about channel three is the FAM FRS channel, but the other ones that are ham are not. But in the case of emergency, you could transmit. Yeah, that's a good point. So normally it would not be legal for you to transmit on a ham radio frequency. Um, certainly not things like the police dispatch frequency. They uh, the the government frowns on that will find you find you and fine you as well the fines are hefty for that sort of thing 
fines run anywhere from ten to thirty thousand dollars for transmitting in those type of areas. However, there is an exclusion in the law. If there's a, uh, if you're in a, an emergency situation, and I mentioned that same rule again, they always talk about loss of limb or loss of life. You are completely legal to get on and transmit on any frequency, any channel you need to be able to get some help. The important key is uh, get some help for somebody who's gonna lose their life or a leg or an arm, and you are within the law to do that kind of thing even on a police dispatch frequency. They're probably still gonna look at you sideways, but you saved a life and deal with those repercussions afterwards. But very good point. If I'm not getting help on channel three, one of the channel threes that I have available, uh, if I don't have a cell phone available or some kind of other coverage, uh, I'm, I'm on, my, on my family standard channel and I'm not getting any help, I'm probably gonna jump on one of those ham radio frequencies and I'm gonna get me some help. Very good um, point on that. And then one more thing I wanted to show you before we go back and look at the uh, programming back there is this particular guide that we looked at on page four earlier. I didn't cover it uh, from top to bottom and I want to real quick. Um, I basically just used it for the um, for the concept of showing you where the buttons were. But it does take that steps in order. Turn your radio on just till it clicks. Don't turn the volume up yet. Click your blue AB button until the triangle is by the upper um, row of numbers on there. Click your orange VFO MR button, or you yeah, have MR, it does say on it, until you have letters on the top line and the little one, two, or three digit numbers out to the right of that display. Push your main channel that you're going to use on the keypad, you do want to use three digits. So if I had you use uh, 002, your radio should all say FRS3 on that top line. Then at that point, you turn your volume up a little bit and you're ready to go with the radio. You can hit that push to talk button, wait a second or two, and you are going to be communicating with somebody. And I think I, I mentioned it already, but I'll say it again. If you do want any of these handouts electronically, the little in case of emergency guide electronically, I do have that and I'll give that up to anybody who wants that. And with that, if there are no questions, I'll take you back and I'll show you programming on everything. Any questions on any of it at all? FRS is what's called licensed by rule. So you do not have to have a formal license by, like you do with ham radio, where you've taken a test and all that. It's licensed by rule in that the rule says you are allowed to use it. So they, they, they say it like that specifically because they don't want you just dialing in any frequency that doesn't fall in one of those services and using it. It's, it's kind of an exclusionary thing. They say, here's what you are allowed to do instead of here's what you can't do. So they, they license by rule in that case. Good question. And that's what all your hunting radios are referring to operate on. FRS, yep. There are some changes coming to those. A lot of the radios are called a combined FRS and GMRS radio right now. Uh, those are going to be changing. There's new ones coming out. The FCC is allowing more power now. So if you were thinking about buying some of those for family members that may not want one of these, I'd hold off for a few months until the new radios hit the market. Um, on, those, on those hunting radios, they're limited to a half a watt of power. It's not much. The, the new rules are going to allow, I think, up to two or three watts, and that's a tremendous difference. So if you're looking at those, hold on. Don't, don't buy them just yet. Yes. Yep, any of those FRS channels are, are A OK for you to use. MERS is a licensed service. Uh, that is one where you, where you would need a license to use it, but I included them in here for that ability to monitor uh, those type of radios. A lot of businesses will use MERS radios. Uh -huh. um, so you were saying turn it on, then we could push um, the 
orange. And then key in your number, you said 002, right? Yes. Okay, so let me, I'll hop down there and we'll take a quick look. Um, I think so. so you've got your radio on, you see the little triangle above yeah. that top row, so if you needed to change that, you'd use the blue AB button. So that'll make that triangle move between the two receivers. Right. Now you've got it by that top line, that's perfect, that's what you want. So, this one. Yep. Okay. And then if you hit that orange button, you'll notice the, no the letters go away. It's okay. all numbers, and the little one, two, and three-digit numbers disappeared out to the right. Okay. So if you hit that one again, okay. now those one, two, and three-digit numbers way out to the right came back, and your words came back. So now you know you're in a channel mode. That's the way to know you're in a channel mode. Those one, two, and three-digit numbers are the channel numbers. So when I want to enter something, like I tried to enter 002, mm -hmm. nothing happened. And you're already on two. So if you look at the little number all the way, the channel number way out to the right, yeah. you'll have a number two in there already. If that backlight shuts off on you too, yeah. it shut, it, they turn off real quick. There's an exit button on the keypad on the top right hand side. If you hit that, your backlight will come on again for a few seconds and it'll let you get some lighting to help you see that too. Okay, so I did 003 and the three came out. So okay, so that radio is not in channel mode right now. So what I would do is hit the exit button and hit your, your orange VFO MR button. You got words displayed in the top row and the little one, two, three digit numbers on the right. Now you're in a channel mode. So if you hit 003 now, now you've changed over to MERS number three. And channel three displays out in the very right-hand side on that line. Okay. And that'll become more familiar if you get these out and use them. Maybe once a week, use them. We live on 33 acres, and when I go outside, if I'm gonna be out of eye shot of the house, I've got a radio with me, and someone in the house has a radio turned on. I get out in the woods within 50 yards of leaving the house. So, I get a lot of practice on the radio, and that's a great thing just to do if you're going outside. Pick up that radio, let someone know I'm going to be outside, we're going to be on channel, whatever your, your family wants to use as a standard, and you'll be in business and you'll get used to using it, working through the channels and that sort of thing. Yeah. So a quick question, I know we talked about um, <clears throat> the CB radio and mm -hmm. Walkie-talkies, um, the frequencies they use can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Those channels, channel two on one walkie-talkie, may not necessarily be the same channel two on another one. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Uh, that would be one of those things where you'd want to test it. First, look and see the walkie-talkie might give you an idea of what its frequency is right on the back of it. These radios are capable on some of those kind of frequencies too, so it's one of those things where you'd have to test it. Any other questions? If not, let's head to the back and I'll show you some programming. For purposes of the recording though, I think we're probably done in that case, so.